The story of the Joseph is one of the more well-known stories within the Bible. Uh, it's something that has a musical made of it, so most of us are very familiar with this tale, with this tale of brothers selling their brother to slavery and him kind of working his way up and eventually uh, being able to help them and the rest of his family as well due to this event. And uh, this is somewhat of a darker scripture for us this week, especially when it is taken out of the context of that story, uh, because it does end with Joseph being sold into slavery. But I think there are some uh, there are some real lessons that we can kind of take out of this, namely that God can use moments, uh, real low points in our lives to pave the way to something much better later on. And that's what happens here with Joseph. Uh, you know, Joseph and his brothers, uh, relationships between them frayed very clearly. Uh, a big part of this is due to his father's favoritism. Uh, Jacob, uh, clearly, as is said in the scripture, tr saw Joseph as his favorite. And the giving of this coat, this uh, colorful coat, as it is in the, uh, in the musical, and it probably was a coat of bright color, uh, it was a sign of what he thought of his son. Generally, these uh, brighter sort of colors uh, were more associated with royalty. Uh, so in many ways, he's kind of earmarking when Joseph, when he gives him that coat, that he's the next in line. So that is making, uh, you know, his brothers jealous because they're all older than him, <laughs> uh, with the exception of Benjamin, uh, who is not included in this story. Uh, then on top of that, uh, what is not in our passage is Joseph's dreams. Uh, these dreams all deal with uh, this sort of idea of him almost being uh, worshipped or revered or treated like a king. Uh, you know, he's got, uh, there's a dream where is, there's several bushels of wheat and they bow down to one of them and the stars and the moon and the, that are bowing down to him. And this was very offensive to his older brothers because here's this little brother who in their culture is supposed to be lower on the pecking order than them within their family structure. And, and they're just thinking like, what kind of, you know, our father is favoring him above the rest of us when he shouldn't and now here he is like telling us these dreams where we're like you know bowing to him as, as if this is going to hold and of course you know what they're missing here is that those dreams were actually prophetic they're telling about uh what was eventually going to come at the end of this story when they were to be encountering joseph in egypt uh and so these things kind of all mix together uh, to result in uh, their these brothers deciding when they see Joseph approaching them in this colorful coat, coat to try and kill him, uh, you know, and of course he, they are talked out of it by their older brother, not due to any sort of sense of compassion. Uh, it seems like, uh, for one thing, the verses don't say that, but it also seems like Reuben is probably trying to use this as a way to get back into his father's good graces. He was kind of had fallen out due to something previously mentioned a few chapters ago. Uh, but there, he's kind of spared, his life is spared, and he's sent off to Egypt. And this, for Joseph, would have had to have been a real low point. You know, he's going from being essentially almost crowned a king by his father uh, to being a slave now. Uh, but as we see in his story, God had big plans for this. Joseph had to kind of be sold to be a to into slavery and go to Egypt so that their family, uh, the, their, his whole family could be supported and taken care of uh, when this famine would hit. And eventually this would, of course, lead to, uh, you know, the exodus as well. And eventually even the, you know, entire state of Israel all kind of comes back to and owes its sort of origin to, you know, this story as well. If this did not happen, it, there's a good chance that Israel would not exist today as a nation. So God really can use, you know, these terrible moments, these horrible sort of stories uh, you know, it's instances in our own lives uh, to create real good out of them. And we should take some comfort in that and, and use that as a little bit of a perspective when we are going through these difficult times. Now, of course, that does not mean that in the moment you're necessarily going to feel better about whatever you might be going through. It's very natural as a human being to have feelings, uh, you know, or negative feelings when you are struggling or dealing with some sort of difficult issue in your life. Uh, but you should take comfort that like with Joseph, God has a plan and that things are going to work out for good. And that should be something that you are comforted by and should give you some level of strength as you go through that sort of situation. Amen.
And now I'd like to invite you all to join me for our last worship song today. 